Hello and welcome to this poster presentation. This is a collaboration between Stockholm University, VSP and IVL, the Swedish Environmental Institute. The title of the work is Historical Usage of Aqueous Film Forming Foams, a case study of the widespread distribution of perfluoroalkyl acids from a military airport to groundwater, lakes, soils and fish. My name is Marko Filipovic and together with my co-authors Andreas Volde Jorgis, Karin Nordström, Momina Bibi, Maria Lindberg and Angelian Österos, we're going to present you this work. This is the poster you are seeing. I'm going to start with a brief introduction and objectives, followed by methods and materials, and then we're going to jump to the results, where we're going to discuss PFAS concentrations in surface and groundwater, in soil cores and in fish muscle tissue. And we are going to end this with a brief discussion and acknowledgements. Objective and aim. So why are we doing this? Perfluoroalkyl acids, shortened PFAAs, have been produced since the 1950s. They are ubiquitously found in the environment and do not degrade under environmental conditions. Some of the longer chain PFAs bioaccumulate and are toxic to humans and aquatic organisms. Historical usage of aqueous film forming foams containing PFAs at fire training facilities have shown to be a potential source of PFAS to the environment. The former military airfield F-18 located in Stockholm, Sweden, was in use between 1946 to 1994. On the figure to the right, uh, on the left side, figure A, we can see a red ring which marks where Stockholm is on the map. On the right side figure we can see a black cross which shows where the landing strip of F-18 is. And DVP stands for drinking water production, so this is where the water is being produced. During the lifetime of the airport several fire training facilities have been intensively used and abandoned. What's more interesting is that there is a fresh water source located under the airfield which is used for drinking water production for 15,000 inhabitants. During a screening test in 2011, the freshwater source was found to be contaminated with high concentrations of PFAs. Those news were snapped up fastly by the media, where they raised concern regarding high concentrations of PFAS in the drinking water and also potential contaminations of fish. The aim of this study is to investigate the multimedia distribution of PFAs at the military airport and the near surroundings. Materials and methods. On the figure to the right we can see the black cross which marks the landing strip of the former military airfield F-18. And if we create a red box around it, we can see that this area is larger than 4 square kilometers. Having in mind that this area has not been used for more than 25 years, there are no staff working there. In order to find all of potential sites where aqueous film forming foams were used to a great extent, we had to, identi we had to in do interviews with staff that has been previously working at the military airport. So in this study, we took samples of groundwater, surface water, topsoil, soil cores, and fish were collected, both in the near surroundings and more far off. We analyzed four different compounds, perfluorohexanoic acid, perfluorohexane sulfonate, perfluorooctanoic acid and per perfluorooctane sulfonate with HPLC MS. Results PFAS concentrations in surface and groundwater. In figure A we can see Stockholm, the capital of Sweden is being red marked with a ring. In figure B we can see the mili former military airfield. The black cross is uh, the landing strip and we can see the concentrations of uh, PFAS in the surface waters. What we can see from the picture B is that the concentrations in the surface waters are highest close to the military airfield and decline further off. In uh, figure number C we can see the concentrations of PFAS in the groundwater and the tap water wells. As we can see the black arrow shows where the um, the hydrological flow of the groundwater and uh, we can see that the groundwater has high contamination and if we compare the, this groundwater with the tap water wells we can see that the groundwater flow is pretty narrow that's why we don't see 
uh, dispersion of this contamination to the groundwater wells. Results PFAS in soil cores. In the picture to the left, close to the landing strip, we can see T1, T2, and T3 being marked. These are the sites where we took the soil cores. T1 represents the old fire station, T2 represents the napalm training ground, and T3 represents the main firefighting training facility. If we look to the picture, to the figure to the right, we can see on the y-axis is the sampling depth, and on the x-axis we have either the concentrations in nanogram per gram, per gram dry weight, or to the in the figure to the more further to the right, we have the fraction of PFAS in the sample in percent. What we see here is, if we take T3 for an example, this site has been most recently used, and this is probably therefore that we find the highest concentrations of PFAS in the top soil and uh, the concentrations are decreasing further down. In T1 and T2, we see that the concentrations throughout the soil column are varying in T1, but in T2 they are more stable. This might be due to that this site has been used for napal training ground and firefighting exercises where the napalm oil could potentially uh, sorb, have a stronger sorption of the fluorinated acids and therefore we see a different pattern. Results PFAS in fish muscle tissue in the figure to the left, we can see a map and we can also see on the map fish signs. These denote the lakes where the fish were collected. On the table to the right, we can see concentrations in a nanogram per gram muscle tissue wet weight of PFOA, perfluorhexanoic acid, PFOS, and perfluorhexane sulfonate. PFOA and PFHexanoic acid was not detected in any of the samples. PFOS was the most do dominant uh, homologue and it was detected in all of the samples. In lake number one and lake number four, we found lower concentrations of uh, PFAAs. In lake number three, we found very high concentrations and of PFOS and these are among the highest previously reported. So now over to the discussion. 25 years after the military airport was closed, we can still see that the PFAs are leaching from the firefighting practice sites down into the groundwater. What we find in the lakes close to the airport, the enhanced PFA concentrations are mainly impacted by the surface, surface runoff from the firefighting practice sites. The highest concentrations of PFAs detected in the groundwater are detected below the firefighting practicing sites, which means that they are leaching slowly through the soil column down to the groundwater. Highest concentrations of PFAs in soils are detected at the most recently used AFF training sites. And this can be maybe due to that higher concentrations of PFAs were present in uh, more modern uh, firefighting foams. Um, but this is still unclear. And um, we also find that the PFOS concentrations in the European perch muscle tissue are among the highest previously reported. And uh, therefore, this study also is recommending that the fish is not being used for human consumption. The high concentrations in the drinking water uh, were, were able to be lowered by installing um, carbon filters at the purification plants so the groundwater could be used for drinking water production.